assume that the launch of this September the 1st Freedom Day is appropriate. comes after our independence. And one must ask ourselves the question whether or not we are truly independent, whether or not we are democratic society, whether or not government places workers and people issue at the center of their agenda. I think the answers to all those questions I would have asked is absolutely no. So having said that, the role of the trade union movement have not the labor movement have not changed substantially. There's no difference because the fight continues for justice, for dignity, respect for equity in a society where we continue to see that a few people benefit while the masses must suffer and fight for the spoils. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the pandemic, the pandemic of the 19 will have exposed all, all the misrepresentations and the lies that we have. The pandemic would have demonstrated us in a society where we're supposed to be the 11th rich country within the Commonwealth region, that we still have children who cannot get a laptop, that we still have workers working at a wage where they cannot survive. We still have families families who have to choose between life or the children who are getting paid. But more importantly, we have now seen the new mantra, which is mandatory vaccination for jobs. If you don't take your job, you cannot work. And the employers and the business community have taken upon themselves a remit of one that I will call omnipotent, meaning that they are all God and all powerful and all knowing they are in God, and therefore they determine for workers whether or not you live or you die, right? A remit under the law that they have, that they have no authority to solve. That is why Freedom Day on the 1st of September so absolutely necessary. And let me raise another question that I've been raising in the public domain, and that has to do with the government as an employer and the responsibilities that the government have as an employer. We must separate the government as an employer and the government as the government because the government is governed by international standards from the ILO, which they are signatory to. And how do you justify the government continued refusal to sit down and negotiate with government employees and their union, recognized majority union, to discuss wages and increases for these workers? How do we justify? How do we justify that there are workers who haven't received any wage increases uh, from as way back to 2007? How do you justify that when there are wage increases, like on the board, the president and I that this government refuses to give the instructions to the board to pay those wages, although it has been legitimately negotiated with the board and management and the parties acquiesced to that agreement. How do you justify in the 21st century that the government at state owned television TTT? Continues to deny workers under the, the disguise that they are freelance workers, their right use. Do you justify in Trinidad and Tobago in the 21st century that the workers that TTT are not paid over time when they work on a public holiday, when they are on the off day and they call them out? They are not paid no overtime. They are Deductions, NIS is not taken out from these workers. How do you justify that a worker is on a contract and a management at TTT and calling that worker? 